briefly um, in the welcome, just to, for those of you who are not familiar with Gat Fest Film Festival, um, Gat Fest Film Festival is the Caribbean's premier community festival or film festival in the island of Jamaica. And the festival is held annu annually in Kingston, Jamaica, and also in Western um, Jamaica, which would include Montego Bay. Um, so uh, as a part of our, our film festival, we have activities, uh, various activities, uh, the workshop being one of them, um, film pitches, um, panel discussion, and so forth. So you're fortunate to join us this evening on our first um, workshop series. And I will move on now to introduce our tonight's present presenter, who we're gladly, and it's a pleasure um, to have um, Ms. Frances Bellman. For those of you who are familiar with her work, um, you know what a great pleasure it is. And she will also be not just talking or presenting this evening, but she'll also be sharing some of her work um, visually, so her film. So just to introduce um, Frances. Um, Frances Anne is born in England of Trinidadian parents. Um, Frances Anne began her professional life at the BBC in England, where she built a successful career as a producer, first with BBC Radio and then with BBC Television Drama. Um, she also produced and directed independent films through her own company, Lida Serene Films. Um, in 1999, she moved her company to Canada, where she continued to write, direct, and produce films, television programs, theater plays, and new media projects. Um, in 2001, she founded Caribbean Tales, a charitable organization producing and exhibiting, as well as distributing educational multimedia project based on Caribbean heritage stories. So if I could just inject very quickly, um, Ms. Francis has been an advocate of Caribbean film and not just within the region, but the diaspora and globally. Um, she has received many prestigious international awards, including best diaspora film in the Paul Robeson category at Fest Paco 2019. Um, other directing credits include the film feature um, Peggy Sue, um, 1997, What My Mother Told Me, 1995. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, but is she? And she also the, has done documentaries, which she's got credited for that as well, Literature Alive documentary, and I is a long memoried woman. Um, she's produced many other, after that, uh, multi award winning, right, um, films, um, Kingston Paradise in 2013. And her most recent or latest film is The Hero, um, which is inspired by the extraordinary life and time of Mr. Ulrich Cross. And this uh, came out, I believe, in 2019. And it began its world tour in February of 2019, um, February 28th. And this has also um, received, have been receiving critical acclaim. So I will stop there. I could go on and on until tomorrow because of the extensive work that Ms. Solomon has um, done and contributed to Caribbean film. Take it away, Francis. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Francis Lisa. Anne. Thanks, Lisa. You, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, cool. So yeah, I was saying that I'd really love it if you guys want to turn on your cameras because it just is really weird looking at little boxes. So yeah. <laughs> Hi, Mary. <laughs> Great to see you. Um, who's there? Oh, hi. Hi, um, Savannah, Renata. Excellent. Taromi. Excuse me, I want to introduce you to my assistant who's going to be bothering me the whole time. Her name is Lida. And if I just turn around and say, stop it, it's because she's annoying me. Um, so Kyle and Kobe and Ika, who's Ika? Tina, Laurie, Tonya, please join us. <laughs> it's very strange. Anyway, so um, my name is Francis Ann, obviously. Thanks for the introduction, Lisa. I'm very pleased to be here. And um, I guess the um, subject that I'm supposed to, hi there. Hi, Laurie, good to see you. And Tiffany, thank you. Um, good to see you. Hi, D David. Is it David? Oh, David. David? Okay, cool. Yeah, it's great to have you because then I feel like we're having a conversation, right? Instead of um, a speech. So the subject I'm supposed to talk about is, um, is uh, being a Caribbean filmmaker, Caribbean woman filmmaker, um, which is, a, I don't know if I've ever, 
if I've ever um, spoken on that issue specifically. Um, but um, just to give you a background, I grew up in Trinidad. And um, at a time when it wasn't really, it really wasn't done. I'm not sure if it's still done to be an artist or to, well, in my, well, in my family and in my background or to definitely not to have a Korean film because film didn't exist and to some extent still doesn't exist, you know, as an industry in the Caribbean. So um, I always wanted to write and, and tell stories. Um, and I always experienced um, my, my creativity, I suppose, as a, as a kind of way out, as a way of understanding myself and maintaining my sanity and, um, you know, communicating with people, communicating about my, my, um, my inner world, who I was, because I was always a bit odd, I suppose. Although I came from a very privileged background, you know, family and middle-class background, but I didn't fit in. And um, I think it's still the case that fitting in, you know, is at a high premium in, in the Caribbean for whatever reason. There's, um, there's not a lot of space for oddballs for people who don't follow the, the parts that they're supposed to. So for me, my art was and still is a way of explaining myself and communicating with the people of with the world, with the people around me, um, and building community also. Anyway, I left um, Trinidad um, and came to Canada, um, where I went to university. It was uh, the late, well, the late 70s, I suppose, early 80s, which was a time when, as a brown girl, you couldn't, a brown woman, you certainly couldn't make a career in, in the film industry. That was not going to happen. So I moved to England, which is where I was born. And, um, and um, um, strangely enough, England, which, um, which is, you know, the epitome of empire, <laughs> you know, it's where, the, where the queen and the, co the, co the colonial project began. England was pretty welcoming at that time. Um, it had just there had just been riots, very much like today. There had just been riots up and down the country. Um, the Caribbean community had um, rioted against racism. This is in the early eighties, and um, and there was a moment of reckoning. This was in eighty four, eighty six, which is very similar to right now, um, where you know the institutions were sitting up and they were saying, you know, we need representation by this population of people. And, um, and so I was hired by the BBC at that time um, as part of that whole big push. And, uh, and, and I was able to work my way up through the institution. Um, and I worked as a, in all kinds of capacities as a reporter, as an, ex as a, as a, as a director in documentaries, as a script editor in drama, as a, as a, as a producer, and then in, as an executive producer in drama, in both radio drama and in television drama. So I, it was an incredible experience, I have to say, um, being part of that push, being part of that world. I was always the only person of color in my department, always the only, you know, one of the only women, one, you know, the only black woman. I know you probably don't think of me as black, but in England, I was black. Um, and, um, and, uh, so that was an incredible experience. I worked at the BBC for 10, 12 years, um, 13 actually. And then the tide changed <laughs> and all the project, all the, all the pro, pro, um, progress that we had made, um, in terms of, you know, creating representation just shut down. Um, and we went back into the dark ages. It was just incredible, really. Um, and then uh, I moved back to Canada, which I, I, I thought it was a much more open place. Um, and, um, and yeah, I started Caribbean Tales. At that time, I had this dream, right, that the work that I had been doing at the BBC, um, which, you know, I could continue and use, use the skills that I had developed the, the internet was coming online, use the skills that I had developed in order to create a platform for Caribbean film. Um, and, um, 
um, you know, be able to tell the rich stories of, of, of where all of us come from, our rich stories, because growing up when, when I was a child, we didn't have that. We, we learned about the kings and queens of England, but we never learned, you know, the stories of who we are, how we came to be, where we are, and, you know, our own language, our own stories, and Trinidad more than J Jamaica. I think Jamaica has quite a rich, um, has a qu right, quite a rich oral tradition, theater tradition. You know, we had much less than that. Um, theater tradition, yeah. So, um, so I started Caribbean Tales initially um, as a Toronto-based platform for Caribbean films. And that had its whole, that has had a whole journey. So we started, with uh, an online platform. And then we started a film festival, which is now in its 16th, 16th year, Sweet 16 this year. In 2010, we started um, Caribbean Tales Worldwide Distribution because we realized that it wasn't enough to show films. Um, it was also necessary to, to, to kind of monetize them, that we had to build an industry um, and monetize content. So I started with uh, Keith Nurse, who was, uh, it was, it was an, an economist uh, in, who was based in Barbados at the time. I was, I was back and forth to Barbados then. Um, studied Caribbean Tales Worldwide and, and with Mary Wells as well. She was one of the founding members of Caribbean Tales Worldwide Distribution. Um, and then we acquired a whole lot of films. Um, and once we, once we began to acquire films for sale, we realized that there was a need to train people in an understanding of the international market. Uh, because a lot of Caribbean filmmakers, because we don't have an infrastructure for the development of Caribbean cinema in the Caribbean for all kinds of reasons that I can go into at great length. Um, um, I realized that it was important for us to train people, train Caribbean filmmakers. Um, so we started this incubator program that is now in its 12th year. Every year we accept about, um, we accept between eight and 15 filmmakers to the incubator. And so in the last 11 years, I guess we've more than, a, more than 150 filmmakers have gone through the incubator. Um, and then in 2014, I started Cinefam because I felt like, um, you know, I felt like as a, as, a, as a woman filmmaker, I was invisible. <laughs> you know, you, 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 after doing all that work, you still didn't have a voice. And I thought it was important for female filmmakers to have a voice. So we started Cinefam, which means um, films by women. And so that now has its own, um, its own film festival training program and so on. And then finally, in the last couple of years, we started the Windrush Caribbean Film Festival, which is based in England. So I went back to England to show my most recent film and was able to reconnect with a lot of people who I've worked with before. And we started this company and a film festival to celebrate the achievements of those who went to England in, in 1960 and the impact that they had on British culture, black British culture. So that's kind of um, the story of my career and it is 20 past. So what I was thinking was, uh, um, I wanted to show you some clips from my work. Does that make sense? Or did you wanna ask questions now? Which one? No, no, no. Go ahead and show some clips of your work because I'm sure that will also generate some questions as well. I already have questions for you. Okay, great. Okay, so um, that's pretty much my um, career as a producer. Simultaneously, I was, you know, essentially I am an artist. Um, so I continued to um, make films as a creator, as a director. And, and, and a, as a producer. So I'm gonna show you clips from some of my films, just to give you an example of, of the kind of work that I've done, and also show you a clip from Mary's film, Kingston Paradise, which is a film that, we, that I, pr I produced with Mary. So <clears throat> the first film I'm gonna show you is a film, it's one of my first films, it's called What My Mother Told Me. And um, I wanna show it because I think that in the development of your voice, I think that's what I, maybe I could talk a little bit about, you know, in, 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 in being a, a Caribbean filmmaker and being a filmmaker, pretty well the most important thing you want to, you want to kind of figure out and it's it's confusing it's confusing when you come from a colonial background it's in it's in the armpit of america so really you know you, you you're trying to compete 
or trying to compare your aspirations to Hollywood or to British content. The, one of the most important things I think it's, a, it's to figure out is who am I? What is my voice? What is my story? What is it that I can contribute? You know, what, what, what is it that I can contribute that nobody else can? And when you start that journey, you really have to just go inside and, and, and see what are the stories that you have to tell that are real, that are authentic, that are about you. Um, even if you think nobody will ever listen, watch them, nobody will ever be interested. But that's in a way where you have to start, I believe. You have to start with yourself. Um, and so there's this kind of thing, you know, that people's first films are always autobiographical. And I think that that's, that's true and that's a good thing. It's not that you have to stay there and make autobiographical films your whole life, but in a way it allows you to... Um, it allows you to, to paint a picture that's authentic, that draws on your own palette, right? Because one of the, one of the, one of the, um, one of the strongest pu pulls is to try and be like somebody else. And it's not until you go inside and figure out and start telling your own story that you realize your unique voice and how special that is, I think. So it doesn't have to be autobiographical, but in a way that's an easy place to start. So anyway, my one of my first films was a film called What My Mother Told Me, which was about the abuse in my family, my, you know, um, and, um, and it was very controversial at the time because we weren't supposed to talk about those kinds of things. And, um, you know, but I'm going to show you a clip and then say a few things about it. Can you see that screen? Can you see? Yes, we can see the screen thing. Okay, let me know if you can hear it. Okay. Ah? Okay, ready? Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this next. Okay. Fish or chicken? I don't eat chicken. Why not? Don't know, never liked it. Why not? He used to. Well, I don't now. Fish. Salad? Thank you. That night I cooked dinner. I found a clean tablecloth, lit a candle, and we played Happy Families. Frank seemed in better spirits. You were disoriented, tired from the journey, cranky. You were acting up. You said you weren't hungry. <coughs> you all right? <coughs> oh, fine. <coughs> Sorry, go on. I said, Jesse, let daddy feed you, because I knew he liked that, so he started. Look, Jesse, mommy likes the food. Mmm. And daddy likes the food. Mmm, delicious. Now open up. Come on, eat up. That's a good girl. Well, he started to get irritated. It didn't mean anything at first. Come on, eat up. And I was watching. Jesse, eat. You threw up. Suddenly, you were shoveling food into your mouth. Eat it. Bitch. You were screaming and screaming. Bitch. He was hitting you and hitting you as if he wanted to kill you, rubbing your face in the vomit and shouting, eat it, bitch. You were screaming and screaming. I got up to get a cloth. He said, sit down. I sat like a stone. I just couldn't. You're lying. Be... Why are you lying? Don't, Jesse. I'm going swimming. Please yourself.
Okay. Um, can you hear me? So that was a clip from what my mother told me. The story was about a young woman from Trinidad who goes back to, um, who, who live, a British woman who goes back to England, who goes back to Trinidad as an adult when her father dies. And she meets her mother for the first time who abandoned her when she was a child and her mother tells her stories. And what comes through is the story of a breakup of a marriage. So I would say, you know, um, what I learned from doing that, which is obviously it's an autobiographical story um, in, in certain aspects, what I learned from it was that I was interested in memory. I, was, I learned from it that I was interested in telling stories about the past in, in, um, in telling stories that were deeply emotional. Um, there, there are different stylistic and creative things that I drew out of it that really continued throughout my career, throughout that became um, tools of my art in a way, even though I never told, I never made another film that was as, as personal, but it gave me some, some tools to work with. So the second film I'm going to show you, completely different. Now, what shall I show you? Um, I'm going to show you a clip from something completely different now. This is a film called Peggy Sue, which is, um, I, I developed this script at the BBC. And um, when I was a producer there, and then I got an the, the writer asked me to direct it. And, um, and so I got a chance to direct this, you know, two million pound um, film, feature film, which we shot on 35 millimeter, which was a great experience about, it was set in a Chinese laundry in Liverpool. And I was interested to direct it because growing up in the Caribbean, we had had lots of Chinese people who were part of my, in my class. And so like, you know, so I, I felt that it was an interesting exercise, but it was very, very different. <clears throat> oh goodness, okay. Um, just give me one second. Yeah. So this is a trailer for Peggy Sue. It's not um, Peggy Sue itself. It's a trailer, which is, yeah. So, yeah. It's a trailer for Peggy Sue. So it's not like a clip or anything. Two, three, yeah. E sun, palam J. Thank you. Is this for the cake? No. What's it for then? It's for you. <gasps> oh, here's the love. You should only marry for love. Love makes the world go round. That's right. I want to marry someone I love. Will you help me? Why don't you wait till they get here? Very good. Jack. Mm. You know, Peggy. Mm. You'll make sure she meets someone nice, won't you? Has anybody ever told you you have beautiful hair? Oh. Peggy, you want to marry Peggy. If Peggy doesn't want to marry him, it's not right. He thinks Dad should come out of the toilet. As this is who I am, and this is my family.
So you can see that's like a completely different. Is it really loud? It's commenting really, really loud on my side. Yeah, but it's I, fine. Huh? I couldn't hear you, Lisa. Oh, no, I'm saying it's okay. The volume is fine. Oh, it's okay? Okay. Yeah, um, it's a completely different thing. Um, I wanted actually to pull, a, pull away from the autobiographical. I was still interested in, in, you know, stories of heritage, but I wanted to try my hand at telling a story that was culturally very different from mine, that was, um, that was you know, highly stylized. I wanted to shoot it in the, in the, in the, in the style of the 50s which is technicolor and, you know, very heightened realism, not, um, you know, but at the end of the day, it was still a story about, a, you know, about a, a woman um, kind of, you know, finding her way, if you like, um, through, you know, trying to figure out her way through, through, through what was being, the constraints of her life and her, and her experiences. So, um, so that was an interesting experience. Um, then I'll, I want to play a clip from, so this is again, completely different. This is a sitcom that I made in, um, in, in you know, a while back called Lord Have Mercy. It was set in a, in a Caribbean church. We developed this sitcom in Canada. So, um, it was set in a, in, a, in, a, in a Caribbean church, in a West Indian church in, in Toronto. And it was the story, it was kind of inter, intergenerational story about the, the, the pastor who runs the church, his, uh, his um, the lady who, you know, the, the church lady, who's again, you might, I don't know if you know Leonie Forbes, but she's a, a, a very famous and incredibly talented Jamaican actor who still there who's still with us um so she was in what my mother told me and she's also um she's also in 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 lord have mercy um and you'll see she's in all my films because she's one of my muses i guess you could say <laughs> um and um yeah so this was a sitcom set in a caribbean church and again i got an opportunity to bring some of my my um my favorite people from the Caribbean to Toronto to act in it. <clears throat> this is a trailer again. Today's sermon is taken from the book of Revelations and is aptly about new beginnings. Lord have mercy. It's been said that the youth of today is not interested in the church. Amen. That it is outdated. True that. Yeah, yeah. Watch it, watch it. Yeah, 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 watch it. Them come with the Bible and a gun. Them come with shackles and rum. The Lord don't want any black heart voodoo simidimi in here. Them come singing God save the queen. God will save you too if you're down upon your knees. We are going to build a vibrant youth ministry. I feel vibrant right now. Rise up, black queen, rise up. Accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Let me break this down for someone of your intellectual capacity. No! Good morning. Mount Zion, Church of the Ever Blessed, Ever Sanctified, and Ever Anointed. You're all right. Be careful. Be careful. Don't I'm doing good. You know you have to repent. You have to say you're sorry. And you wouldn't do it again because you know that it's wrong. And then you move on. Cheers. Tell me your divine purpose in bringing me to such a place. Now just give me a sign, anything. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise on, praise on, sister. This is Christianity. The more it hurts, the better it is. Amen to that. Lord of mercy. Oh, oh. Lord of mercy. 
Okay. So that was Lord Have Mercy. Again, something completely different, a comedy, but a family drama, you know. Hey, come here. Take off that shoe. Take off that shoe. What is that? What was that? <laughs> Did anybody hear that? Yes, I, I'm just closing some of Someone's mic oh. was, was on me. Okay. <laughs> okay, I thought it was part of the drama. Um, <laughs> and it could have very well be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, again, um, you know, a family drama um, about people struggling and trying to figure themselves out that dealt with social issues. It also dealt with social issues, well-being, you know, very broad comedy. Um, so, um, yeah, so that was that. The next one that I'm going to play a clip from is uh, A Winter Tale. So A Winter Tale is a feature film that I made um, a while back. And it was, actually, it was, it was, um, it was set in a, in a Caribbean restaurant. Um, and it's about um, gun violence. And actually we, we brought it to Jamaica. Mary, who's here, she had organized a, a screening in Jamaica. When was that, Mary? 2008, nine, I think, something like that. 2008. Yeah, 2008. And we came to Jamaica and um it was amazing to me that 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 people in Jam that youth young people in Jamaica really like the film because it's a very Canadian it's about the community it's about the Caribbean community in 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 Toronto um and we actually toured um we toured we 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 did um a number of screenings in Trenchtown and where did we go Mary what what areas did we go to um, I don't remember all the places, but it was mostly at Par pa uh, Palace Amusement Cinema. And then we had one or two screenings in, um, uh, was it? Trenton in Tivoli or Garden. Or Tivoli Garden. Yeah, it was in Tivoli Garden. In that big, in that big. Um, old fashioned uh, cinema. That's in a community that, center. Yeah, the old um, abandoned. It's like a, it's like a col coliseum. <laughs> and we had like a big outdoor screening there. Anyway, so. Um, and I was, and then after after we left, actually, um, some young people continued to show it in Jamaica. Um, I was really, but Mary, we went all over Jamaica. Remember, we went to um, we went to Montego Bay. We went Montego all Bay. about, yeah, yeah. But it was a palace amusement, and then you yes. bring in young people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so this was a winter tale. This is a scene from a winter tale. You finish now, brother. You guys trying to play poker? Wait, what, what? With 18 cards in his hand? Come on, man, let me deal. Oh, play the game quick, man. Play the game quick. I'm fresh on no You guys can pick up all the cards you want. Let him go with this hand. Yo, Gene, come play this. Come play this. Come check this out. You could lose at any level of the team. Sebeka. What? Why you didn't come to my group? Which group? Sebeka. Don't watch nothing. It's just an informal group Gene set up with the police to spy on oh. us. That was tonight. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> listen, I had a double shift, man. I couldn't make that. And you're listening to this one about informal. <laughs> this is not about getting into rats on your friends or informal on anybody. This is about taking charge of your life. And your life. That's bullshit, man. Yo, truthfully, it sounds good to me, man. Sounds good. Well, tell this young man over there that if he doesn't come to my group, he's going to jail. You don't want to go to jail, dude. I was there. Is there any money involved? As a matter of fact, there is money. They're calling it an honorarium, but it's only for participants. <laughs> Yo, 
is boss spear. That's right, laugh. You wanna laugh? That's a big, big joke. Kick, 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 kick. I'm looking around this room and I see everybody we need for the group is right here in this room. 275. You have something better to do? You have. If you have, you have cards to play, you have rum to drink, you have shit to talk, is that better to do than come into my group? You have place for everything. Whoa. Yo, you have a full house. Full house. Gee, are you crazy? You're going to let him get away with that, Professor? Play your hand. You're interrupting the game. You know what? Give me these. Blood card. 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 Blood the little boy dead. He's your grandson, you know. Is this what you're doing about it? What are you doing about it? Eh? Gene. Is this what you're doing about it? Gene, come here, man. Playing cards? Gene, settle down, man. No, man, I'm tired. I'm tired of talking Gene. to you. I'm tired of talking to you. Begging and arguing and pleading. You waiting for the government to come in and sort things out for y'all? This is about helping ourselves, brothers. Man, I, you know, I can stand here until I'm blue in the face and talk to you people about this. But I can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. Take the death of a child, a death of a child, for us to come together and just talk, eh? So that was the winter tale. Um, and um, with with that, I felt like um, that movie, I felt, well, what I was trying to do was explore um, kind of toxic masculine culture and the way that it gets in the way of people communicating and creates violence, you know, and and um, how, how men can get through some of that. Um, so it was about gun violence, but at another level, it was a, it was a female, me, um, my kind of take on on um on tax toxic max masculinity <laughs> um so that was that how much time i don't know if you want to finish so um so the only other films i wanted to show you i wanted to show you um um, the wonderful Kingston Paradise. I want to show you uh, show you this trailer from Kingston Paradise by Mary Wells. So I guess um, Mary and I have been working together for many years. Um, and um, as I said, she she brought my film A Winter Tale to Jamaica. And then um, subsequently when she was making her first feature film, which Mary is the first woman, Jamaican woman, to direct a feature film. So she's right there. You need to give her a round of applause. And I was um, really honored and pleased to, to be able to, to um, help her with this film. So I'll, um, I'll go back, go back. So this was a winter take, um, Kings and Paradise. Move! Hear me? Yeah, I'm calling you. Come on for the foot! No, man. Me put my ketchup on you, all right? Move! Go, go, go! Oh, that damn car! Oh. Oh. Yeah, punch it, punch it! Yes, 
say we left downtown, Rosie. Live the pretty BT life. Me and you, together. We? Power. Taxi point here and a rough rider. <laughs> Look at 200 and change dollars where you walk with. That now go work. You hear that? So again, I'm very pleased to have been part of the, that movie. And um, Mary can talk about it. Somebody's got their mic open, I think. Okay. Um, the, last, uh, the last clip I'll show you, the, not, it's not a clip, it's a trailer for my last movie, which was called A Winter Tale, which is now on Showtime. Um, let me see if I can find it. There it is. Hero, hero. Yeah, hero, yeah. <laughs> it's just, oh, so did I say, okay, hero. Um, this is from hero. I mean, yeah, see it there, right? Did I share my screen? I'm getting a bit tired, no? Did I share my screen? No, sorry, okay. All righty, last one. I can't say that I have family to leave behind necessarily. My mother died when I was 13. And not too long after that, my father abandoned all of me. Nine of us. My entire life seemed to change. What's your name? Kofi Mensa. Kofi Mensa? Yeah, yes sir. Alwick Cross. Vanessa, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, since I was a little boy, all I ever wanted to do was become a pilot. Flying Officer Albert Cross. And now I'm actually here at the area, signing up. Let's just go and kill Hitler. I don't know why you came back to this country. There's nothing here for you. They've been using us. Their men died and they called us. You think they want us here? Come, let's go. <laughs> Help me leave England. <laughs> There's somebody that I want you to meet. This is Mr. C.L.I. James. Mr. George Padmore. This young man, mm. Ulrich Cross. Mm. We need him. Lovely. The CIA, the MI6, the intelligence services, you have to understand Building a movement is not easy, Mr. Cross. I will go to Ghana. So this is Ghana, man? Yes. <laughs> Welcome to Ghana, my friend. Our president, Kwame Nkrumah, and the people came together to unite Africa. At last, Ghana, your beloved country, Free Independence came to over a dozen states peaceably, but in the Belgian Congo, freedom was followed by rioting and army mutiny, reign of terror and disorder. Well, Mr. Bumbutu, things seem to be a bit unstable. This is my country, the Republic of the Congo. Go well, Mr. Cross and do big things.
that's it. That brings us up to date. Um, so that's examples of some of my work and as a, as a director, but also as a producer that I'm proud of. Oh, sorry. I think that's me. Okay. Um, and I'll hand over to Lisa now. Thank you very much, um, Francis Anne. I'm sure everyone enjoyed not just the, the visuals or you know the film, the scenes, but also just the way you weave in the narratives, the history and so forth of the Caribbean. And before I go out into the question and answer um, session, I just want to um, welcome everyone again. I know some persons came in late. I want to welcome Mary Wells. It's a pleasure, Mary, to meet yeah. you virtually. Absolutely. I didn't expect to see you today at all, and I'm, I'm, it's, it's a great pleasure. Thank and you. hopefully you can be a part of our series, one of our series. Hint, Absolutely. Hint, hint. Absolutely. <laughs> and also I want to um, welcome um, Rianne Smith, uh, who's a lecturer in Karamak, because she does work with, uh, she, she's in the film production program, so I want to welcome her. I see her, and I also see many of um, Yui's um, students, film students from both Karamak and um, Faculty of Humanities and Education. I want to also welcome Professor Donna Hope, who's in the Institute of Caribbean Studies, uh, who does look at popular culture. And I know your film engages a lot of music and she, uh, um, Professor Hope does um, music as well. So just welcome everyone. I won't take up any more time because I know you guys are as excited as I am to ask questions. And I'll ask you to just keep your questions brief and your comments or any suggestions, anything. Um, and open your mic. If you don't feel comfortable speaking, you can type it in the chat box and I will also um, be reading those as well. So the floor is yours. Okay. okay. All right, I'm not seeing it. Well, I, I saw some question comments in the box. I know you saw you showed lot lot of mercy the yeah. the series. I, I remember that series um, very well. Um, thanks for that. It, it brought back some memories. Um, someone wanted to know Edward um, Anthony wanted to know where he can access the, the series if they're available online. What uh, Lord have mercy or all Lord, of Lord of mercy? Oh yes, we have Lord have mercy. It's on on our platform, Caribbean Tales TV dot com. Yeah. All right, so that's available. So Anthony or Edward, there you go. You can access it on CaribbeanTales.com. Mm -hmm. All right, that's correct. All and right. Sprang along, and somebody said I love Sprang along, Renata. Guys, you don't want to turn on, hi. You don't want to turn on your cameras and participate. That would be so nice. I know, okay. so cool. And look how we're so be... pretty. Yeah. <laughs> pretty please, up please, pretty. please, just for me. Make me happy. Yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, Hi, uh, Francis. Hi, who's I, that? Yeah. Huh? Turn on my mic. I apologize for that. Yeah. I can't turn on my mic, and I apologize for that. Sorry, not my mic. My um, camera. Okay. Um. Details first. That was one of your first um, establishments or what? festival. It's breaking up, then. Eh? It's breaking up for you too. Yes, it is breaking up for me as well. Okay. Can you type it in the chat box? I will. I can read it after. Oh, there's two new messages. Let me see. All right. So let me see in the chat box. All right. Okay. Um, Lisa, can you hear me? Yes, I could hear you, Savannah. Go ahead. I think Rand had her hand raised. Yes, go, I, I saw that. Go ahead, Rianne. Um, well, I don't know if it's so much of a question. Hi, good night, everyone. You don't want to turn your camera so I can see. I, I really, I really can't. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, well, I'll turn. Should I turn off my camera too? Let me turn off my camera. No, no, you can't. <laughs> oh, I can't. Oh, now I can't. Oh, I see. I can't, but they can. Doesn't make any sense to me. Like, <laughs> it's like I'm watching. I'm watching a lot of people with bags over their heads. I can't see your face. Nothing. Come on, Naman. Go ahead, Ryan. Um, it's about the film festival. Uh, uh, you said it started in, in Canada. I know it's been running for a while. Um, I would like you to talk a little bit about that. How 
you, you have you seen um how to put it have you seen any change in caribbean films over the years has the festival um you know helped to i don't know take the films to the world um but more so in um i guess a maturity of the films or you know what tell me what impact you think the festival has had on caribbean film well, ours is not the only festival. We started in 2006. And um, and at the time, I don't know that there were... I think our festival started more or less at the same time as the Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival. Um, I think it, exactly the same year, actually. Um, and so it was like there was a little bit of a movement happening. Um, you know, there was the the gang who started the Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival, we started Caribbean Tales Film Festival. And um, there was this sense that we were, you know, we had to do something, you know, we had to do something because, um, you know, we wanted to try and get something off the ground. And, um, and so, you know, I started Caribbean Tales because I felt, you know, I was submitting my films to festivals and they weren't getting accepted, even by black festivals, by African festivals, by African-American film festivals. They were just like not interested in our stories, you know, um, because they didn't see us as being part of them. And, and so I decided to start my, you know, start a festival. So, but that's definitely, I mean, I'm not going to go through all the iterations that we've been through over the years, but definitely now I feel that, you know, things have changed a lot over the years and, I don't know if I would like to think that we had a role to play. Um, there are a number of festivals now all over the world. Um, you know, I'm, I, it's, it's, you know, different festivals come and go, you know, and we're still there, <laughs> actually. Um, but now, you know, I, I think it's, it's really great that, um, you know, my film is on Showtime and um, Storm's film is on Netflix. And I saw recently that there was another film, another filmmaker from, is it Bahamas or Cayman, who I can't remember that uh, very recently, who actually got a film commissioned by Netflix. Um, so I feel like um, this is, you know, progress. It's still difficult. It's still very, very difficult because we don't have, and you don't want to get me started on how difficult it is to, to have, you know, to make films in the region, and, um, you know, but we don't have um, a, an in infrastructure for an industry in the Caribbean, you know, it's, and there's lots of reasons for that. Um, there's no government will. You'll find that the countries that have the most successful film industries, the governments are really investing in this, in this, in this storytelling machine. So there's no government will in most of the islands. Um, and then even if there was, We'd have to do it as a region. You know, that's my belief. We can't do it as individual islands because the audience base in each island is not large enough to sustain production of, 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 of what are expensive products, right? So we'd have to build a, a, a region-wide industry. And the only um, entities that can really sustain that are like telecommunications companies like Flow, or um, Digicel or Netflix or streamers like Netflix and stuff, if they decided to invest um, in, in Caribbean film and to, you know, give a Caribbean wide audience to our content and a global audience, then we, get, we might be able to begin to build things. But the knock on is that our filmmakers atrophy, you know, we, we have to keep, we have to make content for audiences um, in order to grow as creators and as content creators. And we just don't have the ability to do that. So that's why I've always lived outside the Caribbean, even though my home is in the Caribbean and my voice is rooted there. Thank you, Francis. And I see you, Colby Bryan, but I just have a very quick question. And re I, I, the reason I just want, it's connected to what you're saying. I don't want it to go off into another question that doesn't have any relevance to what I'm saying. But I, I hear the point about the um, government involvement. And I, at one point when I started to you know, study film more and from a theoretical level, I started to you know, think that 
like Cuba, um, they had a successful and still do have a successful um, film market because yeah. from the get go, from the inception, they've always had government involvement. Yeah. However, when we talk about countries like over the years, like say Trinidad, Jamaica, where there's this idea of democracy yeah. and this idea of freedom of speech, um, do you think that, because you mentioned Digicel, because for me now it seems as though privatization of filming is more, I guess, the way to go, because if we bring in the government now, do you think that will affect the way in which stories are told, the, the content of, of, of film? Because well, we saw that it, within the case of Cuba, with the government funding and government institution that was um, responsible for these films coming out of Cuba, oftentimes they were, and I enjoy these films, and I'm, I'm a big, that's one of my, um, my area that I enjoy teaching, but to a, to a certain extent, there was a lot of government intervention. So do you think perhaps it would be a better route going through the you know privatization in terms of government? I, I, you know, honestly, Lisa, I'm so over th these discussions. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I feel like, you know, like we could go back and forth about what, I, what I've, you know, because now we've, I've had to study this a lot. Um, and, um, you know, if you look at all the major film um, industries in the world, the British film industry, the, the um, well, that's not true. The British film industry, the, um, there are different models, the Danish film industry, the Canadian film industry are all government funded, right? And they're successful. It means, you know, it's like kickstarting, um, supporting, uh, understanding that, that film is 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 um, is a, is an export. Uh, understanding that it is um, an industry and gives people work, and creates a narrative, and you know all those kinds of things. And then there are industries like India, America, which are run commercially, and they're very successful. <laughs> but they have huge Nigeria, huge audiences. You know they have a huge population. America has three hundred fifty million people. India has more, you know, so then, you know, that's, that's what sustains it because, you know, people go to the cinema and they pay little bits of money and, and it adds up, right? True. But we don't have that in the Caribbean. When you have Barbados, has 250,000 people, Trinidad a million. I mean, how do we make money from that kind of, you know, we, ha we would have to um, pitch our content to the diaspora, right, to the di diaspora all over the world. There's 35 million um, Caribbean people in, in, you know, more. I think it's 50 million Caribbean people outside the Caribbean. So if we take that into... Uh. Okay. Thanks, Francis, <laughs> and thanks for your honesty. <laughs> I love it. Um, Kobe Bryan, Kobe Bryan, I see your hand. Go ahead, Kobe. Good night, everyone. Um, similar to the film, the film festival that you have, um, Francis, uh, for creating the production company, I think, I think it's Caribbean Tales. Would you say that was a way to kind of tell stories on your own without the need of um, other people, as well as if you keep put into consideration, like, I guess, the discrimination against Black women in particular? Uh, yeah, I thought I would, I would, I, my dream was to have a company that would create, produce, market and distribute content, um, just like the BBC, you know, because nobody else was doing it for us, we would do it ourselves. And I was looking to work with a lot of the Caribbean governments and, you know, business development agencies and stuff like that, to try and build an industry. Um, yeah, but I mean, you know, the this is an expensive business. And I think at the end of the day, what I feel is that um, we, we have to, you know, we need money. It costs money to make, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be competing with Hollywood, because bottom line is that's what you're competing with. If you're making content, you're not competing with um, the person who's in your class, right? If you want audiences, you're, comp you're straight up competing with, with the best of Hollywood, um, then you need money. And then, you know, so. <laughs> Thanks, Francis. I, I'm going to go to the chat box. I see a very interesting, I know you're going to like this question. I know I'm going to get an honest response. Yeah. I like this question myself. 
Mm -hmm. um, it's from Brian Johnson, and he says, how do you negotiate Caribbean languages in your films for a worldwide audience? Thank you, Brian. Mm, I don't. Um, I feel like um, in my films, I'm, they're not subtitled. Um, so I feel like if you listen to what, if like, I don't know. So I, I know Mary's film, she, she subtitled it because it was, it was in Jamaican language, right? It was very strong Jamaican language. I guess when people are living in, dia in the diaspora, they don't, um, they, they kind of uh, amend how they speak a little bit. So it's kind of a little bit understandable. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like it's the, uh, we, we, we should speak our languages and if necessary, subtitle them. That's what I think. Because like it's, our languages are as valid as French and Spanish and Dutch and those other languages that get subtitled and are taken seriously. I don't think that we should not, you know, try, try to change our languages. Thanks, Francis. And I'm going to go to the chat box. Before I go to the chat box, I just wanted to mm -hmm. add something oh. you said very quickly. Um, I find the, the language issue, which is a, a topic that comes up a lot in you within the Caribbean, there's this anxiety around, they're not going to understand the patois, the Pinto yeah. or the Creole. And I find that um, diasporic filmmakers are less concerned with the, because again, this is a kind of a cinematic aesthetics that they're trying to bring to the fore. Because we've seen, as you mentioned, I, I've, I've been watching some Middle Eastern film and they do have subheading, but they're still using the language or subtitles, excuse me, but they're still using the language. So I think that is really, in terms of that colonial idea around language that is still yeah, yeah, in the yeah. region. So I, I really like that response. You just gotta um, get, just, get rid of all those colonial problems and forget about them and tell the yeah, story. The colonial knots. And I'm just going to read something from my um, WhatsApp. because I, I think I, Mary wanted to say something. Too. Oh, you want to go say something, Mary? Go ahead. Um, well, I, I, just to confirm it, um, it really is a big issue, the language. But I, just as Francis says, I, I think it depends on your story. And if you believe in what you're doing, you create it. And it will find a market. Yes, subtitle films may not earn as much as a non-subtitled film, but it doesn't matter. You have to yeah, make it. Exactly. Yeah. So. Thank you, Mary, for that. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, I'm, and I'm glad this came up as well, because we have some young upcoming filmmakers yeah. in the room. So this is very good advice in terms of how you negotiate. Language. Just tell your story. I hope yeah. none of you are trying to, um, trying to like change your story or, or trying to make your story like Hollywood or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I hope not, because Hollywood doesn't make try to be like itself. It, you know, like it just Hollywood doesn't think, oh, I'm going to be like Hollywood. Filmmakers who make it in Hollywood think, what story can I tell for my audiences? What's my best story? <laughs> Even if they're going to color it with lies. <laughs> Pretend I didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to just quickly, um, Kobe Bryant. OK, well, he says that um, he believe. If we were to seek assistance from the government, there would be less control. Just going to my WhatsApp message, um, it's somebody asked a question, if you could share how you started and continue to manage, how you continue to manage Caribbean tales for so many years, if you could just share that with us. But with great difficulty, um, but we still going, we still alive. <laughs> um, yeah, really with, with huge, I don't really know. I don't really know how I've managed to stay with it for so long. It's been 20 years now since I started this company. And, um, and uh, I guess I just believe, I believe um, in, in, in the importance of, of our stories. And so I keep at it, you know. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. mm -hmm. oh, yes. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I question. Um, I think Tina had asked that question. I think she was interested in the film festival specifically because okay. Tina, we manage a film festival. We know how difficult it is to manage a film festival. As you say, the, um, film festivals pop up all the time and then in a year or two, they're gone. People text me all because I'm the um, director for Gat Fest. People text me all the time saying, hey, do you see this film festival um, coming up or this other film festival coming up? And I always tell them, 
I am not worried. I know how difficult it is. <laughs> So I uh, let's see how long they will stick around. Yeah, that's a very good approach. Yeah. Yeah, but I, just, yes, go, go ahead. Yes, um, but I want to know: Do you well, uh, in regards to the festival, how do you get funding for it to sustain it? Yeah, <sighs> with great difficulty. But um, I guess um, now we get some funding from the Canadian government. You know, oh. we do get um, funding, some funding, some small funding. From the Canadian government, we have to apply for it every single year. But there's um, three levels of arts councils in Canada. There's the Canada Council, the Ontario Council, Toronto Arts Council. We get small, small money that we have to apply for every single year. And then Telefilm Canada has given us small, small money to do training. Um, and um, and you know we have we get money from the consulates, the, the Jamaican consulates, and the when I say money, tiny little money. From the, if we're showing a Jamaican film, we'll get a little bit of money. Or it, for the incubator, there have been times when um, Jampro um, has supported filmmakers to come to our incubator. Same thing with the Trinant Film Company has supported. So the regional, um, the consulates and the and the regional film commissions in the Caribbean, um, in in Africa, in. Um, as well, we we we've been working for a long time with with this with the the Durban Film Art in South Africa. Oh. Um, where else do we get little bits of money? Just very 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 hand to mouth. Um, <laughs> for for three years, we had a deal with Flow, where they um they 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 um sponsored our incubator program, and that was the, those were the golden days. But then Flow changed hands; they got very commercial. And they cut all their local initiatives, local funding initiatives, because they also funded, they funded the film festival in Miami. They funded the film festival in Trinidad and they cut all of that, cut all of us. Um, so all of us have been, yeah, it's very, very difficult. Um, well, we still, we still standing for a long time. You know, my company, my original company was called Leader Serene Films. And my mother used to say it means lead, left standing productions. <laughs> left standing. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you're good. Yes, persistence <laughs> is the virtue. Yeah. Thanks, um, Francis. Then, are there any other questions? I'm going to just read David's comment very quickly from the chat box. He says, "I appreciate the recognition that Paradise got in the West. So much stories and great films that people will never watch due to the subtitles." Thanks, David. And David is a up and coming filmmaker. I know he's into film. Hey, David. <laughs> Big up yourself. <laughs> all righty yes oh good okay. he, i can see him he's a good oh, person i like him very hello? much david if you could just unmute your mic and just say yeah. hello i'll remember you yes 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 hello you got you got, <laughs> you, got you got top marks yes oh i appreciate i need all the marks you will be you'll be the, 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 the one of the filmmakers coming out younger filmmakers because i'm finding you were saying, Francis, and in terms of the stories being told and, you know, mimicking America, I'm finding that uh, through the Gap Fest Film Festivals, the films that we're getting from the Caribbean um, over the years, they have been moving away from that kind of, you know, Black exploitation, ghetto-centric film. So they're fi we're finding now that the films are now exploring or using, um, like, for example, where the genres are changing. We're having horror films, comedy, and um, we had a film that won... It was flight. I forgot the, the, the filmmaker's name. It was set in the um, inner city, but it didn't have that inner city tone of you know the ghetto centric. It was a young boy who wanted to be an astronaut, so it captured other narratives in the, the, the yeah. inner city. So it wasn't just about the, the gun violence. And then we also had we have documentaries coming out of the Caribbean as well. So we're the, I, I'm seeing a, a shift where yeah. we're appreciating and even yeah. using folklore, we're starting to understand that, wait a minute, we don't have to be in America. Of course, the influence is still there, but through yeah, the yeah, yeah. we've seen that the, the the film makers are are shifting from um, from that, right, from oh. that. And hopefully when we open up, uh, we'll be able to have um, people like Mary Wells and yourself come and join us at our premiere and our launches. So we're looking yeah. forward to that uh, once we open up. So I don't see any more question. I see someone very quickly. There was also Origins by Kurt Wright. Um, okay, so Tina, Tina, you want to throw these out? So Tina's just throwing out some of the, um, 
Kia Moses, not Kia Moses. Oh, Kia Moses. No, I was, I was saying that the, the film you're referring to with the astronaut, the little boy, is Kia Moses, and she won six awards in our last stage. It was greatly appreciated by the judges, the audience, locally and internationally. And then um, I think it was the year before that, or maybe the year before that, um, the film's origin by Kurt Wright was also really appreciated. That focused on, um, I think, make on folklore because the setting was very um, colonial and, and all of that. Even though it's it, like a modern colonial type of feel, but it was really appreciated, really good. Thanks for that, Tina. You're reminding me also of um, Andre Winters, who has done films similar to that um, that model. Yes, yeah. and I, I, I was mm -hmm. I was one of the um, judges. I was the chief judge, so I was able to, uh, along with the other judges, we were able to recognize um, those those cinematic aesthetic changes that are occurring through the Caribbean. I think the more we begin to appreciate what we have here, uh, we will begin to make those tra that transition. And you made a very important point too, the way in which the diaspora also plays a very important role in connecting with um, Caribbean films within the, within the region, not just to tell stories about the region, but also Caribbean stories outside. Because Caribbean stories are also not just confined to the Caribbean region, but it's confined also, or it extends to the diaspora globally. Yeah, there are yeah. huge populations of Caribbean people every, in major, every major urban center of the world. Toronto, Montreal, New York, or, you know, there's five or six um, big centers in the United States, London, Birmingham, you know, Paris. I mean, go, go Accra, you'll find a big Caribbean community there. <laughs> Not even joking. We are everywhere. Um, <laughs> but I would, I would like to encourage all of you to submit your films to, to you know, get in, get in touch, submit your films to Caribbean Tales and also you know, we, we would love you to participate, to come and join our incubator program. And Lisa, we would also love to partner with you, um, with your festival and do an exchange. Um, if you're interested, if that's something that you, that would interest you, um, we'd love to, you know, find synergies to work together. And, yeah. you know, because that's how we build, you know, that's Definitely. how we build, yeah. Sounds great. Well, I'm I'm the deputy director, so I would have to speak to the director about that. No. Sure. <laughs> I'm sure the team we have, is a team of us, and 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 that sounds great. We're always open to partnership, always open to expanding, okay. yeah. and that's a good thing about the um this virtual format that I'm getting the energy already. I'm getting excited as, as you can see. So I, I just wanted to um end this here. If um, Francis, if you have any final words, I don't see any comments except for um. Tiffany Lindo saying there are two, there are short films from JAFTA Propeller Program. I'm assuming Tiffany, you're referring to the films like, that were mentioned by Tina. And Tina says, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Or, yes. Origins and yes. In Flight, yes. yeah. So I'll just give you the last, before I turn it over to the director, Savannah, to give us our closing, our thank you, our closing remarks, I'll just um, hand it over to you if you have any last words. Or no, no. I, I said, I think that was it, which was, um, you know, I'm excited about the possibilities of, of, of working together, Lisa and Savannah, now that we have made this contact. Um, I would also have to defer to my team, um, you know, because I have a team and but but they, they will be very excited about about the possibility of, of, of connecting. We're always looking to make links and and join up. Um, and we also have a festival in um, in in the in the UK now, our Windrush for Film Festival, which because it's virtual will be global. So please join us for that. And also we have our Cinefam Women of Color Festival. So so many women here, you know. And so it'd be great if we can do things together that way as well. And so now we're connected. Let us never be parted. And I'm looking forward to all the young filmmakers whose faces I can't see, right? Um, <laughs> making contact and moving forward. I don't. And thank, thanks so much for a reuniting. I guess reuniting because like, we've met each other before, and it's again through virtual our platform that we're able to do so again. So thanks so much. I know the students are excited, both from Caramac and the um, humanities um, faculty of humanities, and also I, I see persons um, from other places. 
Um, thank you again. So I'll just hand it over to Savannah to um, give her a closing okay. remarks. Thanks very much, um, Francis. You're welcome. Enjoyed it. Hello again, everyone. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to our moderator and main organizer, Dr. Lisa Tomlinson, for all the hard work that she did in organizing this event and for being our moderator this evening. Um, big, big thanks as well to, um, to Ms. Francis and Solomon. Thank you so much for being here this evening and for imparting knowledge to our filmmakers. I'm not a filmmaker myself, but I am a festival organizer and I've learned so much this evening. Um, big thank you to Jampro, our film commissioner, Renee Robinson, and our sales and promotion officer, Tiffany Lindo. We just saw her comments in the, um, in the chat. Um, this event would not have been possible at all without Jampro. Thank you so much for sponsoring us. And thank you to our participants for being here tonight. I know there are lots of online things happening and you could have been anywhere. And thank you so much for being right here. Right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. And just very quickly, just look out for our series because we are hoping to start a Get This Film um, workshop series. So just to please look out for it. Uh, Mary Wells, look out. <laughs> mm -hmm. right, so, yeah, that's all I have to say. Just to look out for... Um, Will do. Yeah. All right. Th thanks very much. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Okay. Bye. Thank you for having me. Bye, thank you. Bye, Francis Anne, thank you.